Be thou strong, therefore, and show yourself a man. Repent or die, brothers falling off like a bike chain. Purple... Because he knows and understands at this very day, when you walk outside, they're going to be saying, this nigga ain't no good. Stop the car. Search him. Hands on top of the hood. What's your name? Where you coming from? Where you live? He telling you to be strong. Understand that you're an Israelite and that you must keep God's commandments. Understand that you're a king. Understand that we come from royalty. So don't treat your brother with disloyalty. You understand? Read. Be thou strong. And keep the charge. Be thou strong. Be thou strong therefore, and show thyself a man. And do what? And keep the charge of the Lord thy God. It says keep the charge, man. Hey, bro, keep the orders I'm about to give you. Watch this. We're going to let you go. Last one. To walk in the ways and to keep the statutes. In his commandments. Uh -huh. In his judgment. In his commandments. In his commandments. He just said it. That shows you what, a, what being a man is all about. Understanding who you are and keeping the commandments of God. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Don't lie. These are the commandments that we must keep. These are the commandments that we broke. That God is in the hood. That God is in Greens Point or Guns Point to this very day. That's why we at the bottom. Because our people don't want to keep God's commandments. You understand? All right. Hey, when y'all get a chance, look us up. Uh, we got our YouTube information on there. Come visit the school. All right? All right. Now, um, go to 1 Peter 2 and 5. Yeah, yeah, royalty. Get that. Because the black man, the Hispanic man, you are royalty. You are kings. You are gods on this earth. But what happened? We are dying like men every day because of our sins, because of our transgressions. 1 Peter 2 and 5. Yes, sir. Let's do that right there. Everybody. The book of First Peter, chapter 2 and verse 5. Ye also, as living stones, are built up a spiritual house. Uh -huh. And house priesthood. And holy priesthood, uh, holy priesthood. To offer up spiritual sacrifice. Verse 9. It's verse 9. But ye are a chosen generation. The Bible says that the black man, the Hispanic man, you are a chosen generation. My brother in the red shorts, you come from a chosen generation. Thus saith the Lord thy God. You understand? You don't just come from pimps and hustlers and drug dealers. You come from a chosen generation, big bro. I know you laughing, but understand that you come from a royal priesthood. Right. That's why every day we step out the house, we have to find a way to look fly even when we ain't got nothing. You know what I'm saying? We cannot have a, a, a pot to piss in or a window to throw it out. The black man is going to always come out looking the best that he possibly can. Because he understands in his spirit that he is royalty. Even though he may not conduct himself as it, there's little glimpses and little signs that he'll have in him that show that he come from royalty. Read. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. A royal priesthood, read. In holy nation. A holy nation. The Bible says that the black man is holy. That the black woman is holy. Read. A peculiar people. A peculiar people. That's not a normal Negro word. The word peculiar means very special. Special, very bizarre, very different. The way that we talk, the way that we walk, the way that we carry ourselves is different from all the other nations. Even at our lowest state, we are greater than any other nation upon this, the face of this earth. At our lowest state, read. That ye should show forth the praise of him. That we should show forth the praise of our God. And that's what we forgot to do. We forgot to show forth the praise of our God. Now we put our praise in our law. Amos 2 and 11. Now we put our praise in uh, Buddha. Now we put our praise and our honor in uh, Christianity. That is where our honor and our praise is in now.
read that. Amos 2 and 11. Because a lot of our brothers, they'll go to jail and they come out Muslims. And they think that Muhammad was a prophet. Let's show that he wasn't a prophet. Read. The book of Amos chapter 2 and verse 11. And I raised up uh, of your sons for prophets. It says I raised up who? Your sons for prophets. Hey, the Bible says he raised up your sons for prophets. Who's the your here? The children of Israel. Y'all are the prophets of the Most High God. Read. And your young men for Nazarites. And your young men for Nazarites. Read. Is it not even thus, O ye children of Israel? Is it not even thus, ye children of Israel? So if you see a white man with the Bible, you must tell him to put it down. It does not belong to him. He's not a prophet. Only the blacks and Hispanics are the real prophets of God. Alright, go to um, bring out the curses. Deuteronomy 28 and 15. We got to go back to it. It's going to always bring us right back here. Deuteronomy 20, 28 and 14. Because no matter how great we sit up here and say that we are, at the end of the day, reality shows and proves that we're at the bottom and that we're living a cursed way. Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 15. But it shall come to pass if thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Moses is a hey, big bro with the red shorts. You remember all of them royalty, all of them kingship scriptures we just got done showing you? Right? But now, if we saying that we the kings and we the rulers of this earth and all of this stuff, then why are we at the bottom? Why, if we so great, if we so powerful, if they're not faster than us, if they're not stronger than us, if they're not smarter than us, how are they ruling over us, big bro? I'm about to show you, all right? Watch this, pay attention. Deuteronomy 28 and 15. From the top, take your time. Verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. It said, but it will come to pass if you don't listen. All of that stuff that we showed you in the beginning is good. But Moses told the children of Israel, yeah, you great, you holy, you kings, but there's a stipulation. But if you don't listen to the Lord thy God, what's going to happen? To observe to do all his commandments in his statutes. It says that we have to do all his commandments. His commandments. If we don't do it, what's going to happen? Which I command thee this day that all these curses shall come upon thee what? and overtake thee. What is going to come upon the black race? All these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. It said, even though you're so great, if you don't keep these laws, that's your commandments, curses are going to come upon you and overtake you. You ever look at the news and you see a, a tsunami hitting Japan? It covers all of the earth over there. It overtakes it. That is an example of how the curses have overtaken us. And I'm about to show you. I'm about to prove it to you. Watch. Verse 16. Verse 16. Cursed shall thou be in the city. Where are we going to be cursed at? Cursed shall thou be in the city. It says, cursed will you be in the city. Big bro, that's why you can go to Houston. That's why you can go to um, New York. You can go to Arizona. You can go to Mississippi. You can go to Virginia. No matter what city and state that you go to, black people are going to be cursed in that city. How? They're going to live in places that's called Guns Point. They're going to live in places... That's called Sunnyside. You understand? They're going to live in Fifth Ward. No matter where they at, they're going to always live. And guess what? They're going to all call it the bottom. The gutter. You understand? I come from the mud. That's Bible talk. The, Moses said, y'all going to have to come from the mud since you don't want to keep my commandments. Read. Curse shall there be in the city. And curse shall there be in the field. It says, curse will you be in the field. I need you to raise your voice for me. How was we cursed in the field? How was the black race cursed in the field? What were we doing in the field? Slavery? Is that what you said? Slavery, exactly. That's how we was cursed in the field. But guess what? That's in the Bible. It shows that if you don't keep the commandments, you're going to be cursed in the field. 
Verse 48. Big bro, come see the pictures. It's hard to see from over there. Where your interest at? I know you can slide through the gate. Come chop it up with me, bro. Come on, man. Come show the love of your people that you got for your people, bro. Come show the love of your people, man. You know, you ain't got no ankle monitor on. Come on over here and hear this word, big bro. All praise to the Most High. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 48. We're going to make this Bible real, real. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and uh -huh. thirst. In nakedness and uh -huh. want of all things. It said we was going to have to serve our enemies for the want of all things. Right. That means no matter what you need or whatever you want, you're going to have to go to your enemies for it. Right. If it's an ID, if it's a driver's license, if it's a passport, if it's a car, you're going to have to go to your enemies. No question about it. It's a fact. Read. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until, when? until he have destroyed thee. That shows that we are destroyed people because physically we don't have the yokes of iron on our neck anymore. And it says the yokes of iron was going to be on your neck until your enemies destroyed you. That's why you will see black people Walking around with their pants on the ground. Hmm. Talking about I'm a real nigga. No, you're not. You look crazy. Read that last part again. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. When your pants below your waist sagging, showing your drawers, that is a sign of a destroyed state. Not knowing you, not knowing who you are, is a sign of a destroyed state. Hey. Read. Verse 49. Verse 49. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from afar. It said the Lord was going to bring a nation against us from far. From where? Read. From the end of the earth, uh -huh. as swift as the eagle flee. A as swift as the eagle flight. As swift as the eagle flyer, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. Uh -huh. Verse 48 again for my bro. How you doing, man? Come on up. I'm Silas. What's your name, bro? Mac. Mac, how long you been out here, Mac? In Houston in general. You was born here. Okay, okay, okay. So you know, so you bear witness. It makes sense to you. When the scripture says that we will be cursed in the city, and then you look at all the cities that predominantly black people live, and you see how bad we live. That makes sense to you, huh? When it said we will be cursed in the field, this makes sense to you, huh? This happened to us. This happened to our, you saw the movie Roots. You saw uh, 12 Years a Slave. You saw Django. This is what happened to us. Am I right or wrong? This right here, go to, go to Deuteronomy 28 and 48. Watch this. Go to Deuteronomy 28 and 48. I'm going to show you this in the Bible. Did, you, did they give you a flyer earlier? On the top of that flyer, it says the truth about slavery. Because we've been learning slavery since, what, middle school, since elementary? But now we're going to show you the truth about it. Read verse 48. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 48. Therefore shall thou serve thine enemies. The Bible is showing us that we was going to serve our enemies, not our friends, not our brothers, not our cousins, not our brothers in crime. It said we was going to serve who? Our enemies. So the Bible is letting the children of Israel know, y'all got enemies. So when you hear people like Creflo Dollar, Al Sharpton, people saying, let's just get along one love, that's not reality. Because if it was, there would be no death of George Floyd. He'll still be living to this very day. Right. He understands? Read. Which the Lord shall send against thee. Who was going to send the enemies against us, bro? Pack. 
Read it again. Which the Lord shall send against thee. Who was going to send the enemies against us? The Lord was going to do that. So that's what you have to understand. The truth about slavery. That this wasn't a coincidence. That God designed this to happen because of something. In hunger. In hunger. It says you're going to have to serve them so much. When you get ready to go eat. When you go get ready to do your groceries. You're going to have to go serve this man. And what else? And in thirst. And in what? And in thirst. What's that you got in your hand? Is that made by us for us? To us? It's not. It's made by them. To us. You understand? When our brothers own this side of the earth first. The so-called Aztecs, the so-called Incas, and the Mayans. Read. And in nakedness. Uh-huh. The clothing that's on your very back. Does that, did that come from us? No. Even if we put our name on it, Rockwell, Sean John, whatever they wearing now, P. Miller, whatever they wearing now, it's not by us anymore. They can put their name on it and then all of the textiles and the fabrics, who do we have to go to to get it? We have to go to them to get it. If you look at the back of your shirt, nine times out of ten, the tag probably says, Made in China. Another enemy. Read. And in want of all things. It said, and in want of all things, bro. For your jewelry, for your clothing, for your water, for your, your eateries. Everything that you want, you have to go to them to get it. That is the truth about slavery. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. Nation is community. 